Hi, my name is Lisa. Welcome to How Tuesdays at Lori's Country Cottage. Today I'm going to show you how to make a reading cushion. First thing you need is a piece for your front. I've chosen the large cat print and it's cut 20 inches by 20 inches. Next up, my pocket pieces. So a pocket outside and a lining for my pocket. I've chosen to match them, but you can contrast them if you like. That piece is cut 12 and a half by 20. Then I need two pieces for my back. I've chosen the coordinating plaid for that. My back pieces are 14 inches by 20 inches, and there are two of them. We also need some fusible batting. One piece for my pocket front, so it's cut 12 and a half by 20, and one piece for the front of my cushion, so it's cut 20 by 20. I'm going to jazz up my reading pillow by adding a little bit of rickrack. So I've cut 22 inches so it extends past my pattern piece. And we also need a little handle. So 8 inches either of a finished ribbon or you can actually uh, create yourself a handle out of coordinating fabric. So I have a front, a pocket, a pocket lining, two pieces for my back and a piece of fusible batting both for my pocket and for the front of my cushion. Let's move over to my ironing surface and I'll show you how to adhere the batting to the appropriate pieces. Here we are at my ironing surface. I have my fusible fleece pebbly side up with the fusible pebbles on top and then I lay my exterior pocket piece wrong side down. It's best to use steam when using fusible fleece. So I've got my hot iron set to wool and I have my steam on. If you prefer not to use steam or if you have an iron that doesn't have the steam function, all you need to do is spritz your fabric with water and just create a little bit of moisture so that you create your own steam. You'll notice that I'm pressing my fusible fleece to my fabric and not ironing. I don't want to stretch either my fabric or my fusible fleece. Fusible fleece needs about 10 seconds with a wool setting on your iron to melt the glue and adhere the two pieces together. So I'm going to continue pressing my fusible fleece with my hot iron using steam and I'm also going to repeat for the front of my cushion. When I'm done fusing I'll show you how to create the cushion pocket. All right, now it's time to put our pocket pieces together. Here's my rickrack. I find rickrack a little bit wiggly to work with. So I like to use my acorn seam align glue to help me keep the rickrack where I want it to go. Alternately, you could use Roxanne's basic glue. They both work about the same way. The most important thing is that they dry clear and that they're nice and soft when they dry. I'm going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance when I stitch these two pieces together. And I want that to be a little bit below the center of my rickrack. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. and then stick my rickrack down so that when I stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna catch my rickrack, but still have some nice fun bumps sticking out. So I'm just gonna to continue to glue 
and stick my rickrack down and then I'll show you how the pieces go together. All right, my rickrack is stuck down with my glue and I've given it just a couple minutes to set. Now I'm gonna take the lining piece to my pocket and align it with the top of the pocket piece. My rickrack's gonna stick out just a little bit because that's where I want it to be on my finished pillow. Now I'll take my Wonder Clips. You can use pins if you like, but I like Wonder Clips. And I'll clip all the way along, then take it to my sewing machine and stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance to create my pocket. Here I am at my machine. I've got my quarter inch foot on. And I'm just going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance, quarter inch from the edge of my fabric, just ignoring my rickrack that's hanging out. I love that my glue is keeping the rickrack exactly where I want it to be. stitching is done. Now I'll go to my ironing surface. Oh, that's exactly what I was looking for. Little teeth poking out. I'm going to roll that seam to the top. Give it a good press and then stitch it. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, let's put the front of our reading pillow together. Here's my pocket piece with the fusible fleece on the front. Lay it on the front of your top piece. And remember, it's got fusible fleece as well. Line up the edges and the bottom, and we're gonna baste down both sides to hold it in place. But at the same time, we're going to attach our handle. So take your ruler, we know this piece is 20 inches, so the center is the 10 inch mark. Measure two inches to the right of center and make a mark, and two inches to the left of center and make a mark with your friction marker. Then take your handle piece and place it at that mark. And pin it down. And without twisting your handle, do the same on the other side. Whenever I pin handles like this, I like to pin in both directions because they like to twist. And you're probably wondering why I'm not using Wonder Clips here for that exact reason. I want to make sure they stay straight up and down. I'm going to take this to my machine now, baste over my handle and baste down the two sides. Now it's time to prepare our back pieces. We want to hem one 20 inch edge of each of the back pieces. Remember you have two. So I'm gonna turn up a quarter inch along that long 20 inch edge of one back piece and then turn it up a quarter inch again and give it a good press. Do this along only one long edge of each of your back pieces. Next up, I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and do a top stitch. Okay, let's put our pillow together. Here are my two back pieces and I've hemmed one long edge of each of those back pieces. Now when I have a cushion, if we imagine this is the back of my cushion, and these two pieces are going to overlap, and that's how we're going to fit our cushion inside, I like to have the top of my cushion overlapping the bottom. I don't know if that's correct, that's just how I like it. If you prefer yours with the bottom overlapping, 
you're welcome to do that. But what I'm going to show you gives us the end result of my top piece overlapping the bottom piece. So this piece will go right side down on top of my pillow top lining the sides and the top edge. And then the hemmed edge here, so this is the hemmed edge, the hemmed edge here goes in the middle like that. And again, I'm lining up the bottom and the sides. Awesome. I'm gonna put wonder clips all the way around and then stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance, clip my corners, and then I'm ready to turn. I'll show you what that looks like. Here's our finished cushion. I stitched with a quarter inch all the way around, clipped all four corners. I also did some reinforcing stitches where my pieces overlap. And it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of reinforcing right over your handles as well. I'm gonna flip this right side out, give it a really good press, and come back and show you what our cushion looks like. Here's our finished cushion. I love it. There's the handle. Here's our pocket. And you'll see on the back, I like when my back pieces lay flat and there is no gap. And in order to do that, you need to have your cushion be a cushion cover, sorry, be just a little bit bigger than your cushion. If you don't like that, there's enough room in your cushion top to actually stitch a quarter inch all the way around and you can tighten it up and it makes it look like a bit of a decorative feature on your cushion. But here is our really cute cat reading pillow. And so when you give this as a gift, if you're going to give it as a gift, you tuck the book in the pocket and you can even add Cinderella's little mouse, a little gift to go with your book. You could also put a reading light inside, a pair of socks, even a pair of pajamas if you like. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you some other things you can do with the reading pillows. Here's another reading cushion I made out of our fabulous glow-in-the-dark frogs. What kid wouldn't love that? If you have a hunter in your family, we have camouflage fabric in the store. You could make your cushion out of camouflage, add a hunting magazine, and a pair of gloves. We also have hockey fabric in the store. You could add a hockey magazine and some hand warmers. We have sneaker fabric in the store. You could make your reading cushion out of sneaker fabric throw in a book and a pair of socks. If you have someone who loves to cook in your family, why not come in and get some food fabric, add a cookbook and some kitchen utensils. Or if you have a princess in your home, come in, find some floral fabrics, add a journal and a pair of slippers or even a candle. If you're making a reading cushion as a gift for someone who loves to quilt, they would love a quilt book and a gift card from Lori's Country Cottage. I know I'd love one. So the cushion I made today is 20 inches by 20 inches. That's just the size I like. If you'd like to make some other sizes, we do have a pattern in the store by Melissa Mortensen. It includes instructions for two different sizes of cushions. I believe they're 18 inches and then one is the size approximately of a pillowcase. And she includes instructions for putting a zipper on your back. So thank you for joining me for How Tuesdays at Lori's Country Cottage. I hope I see you in the store picking out fabric for your reading cushions. Join us tomorrow for What's Up Wednesday with Tanya.